All right, y'all. We are going to be live soon for a quick market analysis, technical analysis video where we are going to be discussing the current crypto markets, whether or not Bitcoin can recover. Stay tuned. Shout out to Luis Rivera. Shout out to Brian George, who can't hear me tonight. Um, how about now, y'all? How about now? Let me know. Guys, give this video a like. If we can get this stream, as usual, up to 3,000 likes, I will give away 0.1 BTC during this stream during the stream what's going on creepy joe sorry bro sorry guys that it's so late shout out to everybody who is doing the course i'm gonna have a special Special discount code for you guys in here. This is a, a late night stream. So, uh, yes. Shout out to Bojan. It's 4.43 a.m. for you, bro. You need some sleep. All right, y'all, I'm going to start this stream right now. So I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is doing well. Blessings to all of you in the name of the Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Pray all of you are doing well, all 274 of us. Shout out to Creepy Joe in the chat. Shout out to Crypto Birdo. Warning people to be smart with leverage. Uh, Darren H. says there is no sound. Um, there is sound, Darren H. Um, there currently is sound. All right, guys, so let's jump into the charts here. Let us take a look and just jump into the charts. And as you know, we have experienced quite a significant move downward over the weekend. And so the question on everyone's mind is, have we bottomed out or do we go lower from here? And so what I want to do in this stream is I want to mark out some levels and kind of basically create a market structure, a framework from which we can trade. We're going to look at some support and resistance levels. We're going to take a look at market cipher. And we're going to come up with a general plan on how to trade this. You know, guys, as traders, it should not matter to us what happens in these markets. It should not matter if the market goes up. It should not matter if the market goes down. 
as long as there is volatility in these markets, there's an opportunity for us to make money. And um, currently, I am in some trades. I am long on Bitcoin from 32K. It's up about 89%. And then my shorts on Ethereum and Bitcoin are still open. Still open. Uh, there's no reason to close the shorts right now, guys. There's no reason to close the shorts. This long was actually a buy order I had set in Bybit. Didn't even know I was in this trade until I got home and logged on to my computer. But I am pretty glad that I am in that trade right now. So let's let's just take a look at the charts. See what we're working with right here. Let's just see what we are working with. Now the first thing that we need to discuss is the fact that we have officially closed a weekly candle far below that 21 EMA on the weekly time frame. Far, far below that EMA. And as many of us know, this EMA historically has been the floor of the bull market. If we go back to the previous bull market uh, in 2016, 2017, 2018, right down here, we can see that the 21 EMA was always acting as the floor of the bull market, right? I mean, way back here, we can see that we would have these massive moves to the upside, massive move to the upside, come down and bounce off that 21 EMA, massive move to the upside, massive. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking like, you know, 78%, we'd come down, we would bounce this giant wick off the 21 EMA, continue upwards. Again, we had a massive uh, move to the upside from that 21 EMA up about 100%. And then we dumped down, we dumped down uh, about 35%. And we're just bouncing off the 21 EMA through the entire bull market, bouncing off the 21 EMA. We have officially closed below the 21 EMA. And not only have we closed below it, but we've closed pretty far below it. In fact, if we just take a measure from the all-time high to this low here that's a 54 percent correction y'all that ain't no joke now there are some notable differences between just looking at the price action from the previous bull run to this one first of all we have really peaked out back here in 2017 where we we reached a very clear tip and then we came right down here's a little bit different here we kind of came up and like round it out before we got the the dump a little bit different looking now we experienced another pretty significant move to the downside over the weekend and I want to talk about why exactly that did happen and we have our levels marked out here and you know last week we've been saying that we pretty much have been trading within within this general range here right between the all-time high of January and this low right here of 29 uh, 752 and if we if we zoom back out to the weekly time frame you know we can see that the range that we are currently trading is the same pretty mu pretty much the same exact range that we were trading in back in the month of January where our high was up here at about 42k and our low was in this general area we didn't get much lower than I think we, we hit 288 something like that so currently we're back into this old range that we were trading in back in January. And the truth is guys, until we lose these lows, until we lose these lows down here of uh you know, what I would say really is um you know, the the, the $28,000 mark, then I think we could continue to trade within this range. Um because really, you know, every time we come down to these lows, we can long and, you know, we come back up at least to the $35,000 level. And it, really, this $35,000 level, this is the midpoint, right? This is, there's a lot of confluence at this $35,000 level of support and resistance. It's a daily level. It's a high volume node. It's the point of control of the whole January, the whole month of January. It's the 618 level. If we pull it from the November dump to the all-time high, there's a lot of confluence right here. And so really, this is the center. If we come above this level, we're going to come to a higher point. If we come below this level, we're, we are going to come down to some of those lower points. And um, I really think that this, this structure, 
that we have right here, at least for right now, we can see on the daily time frame, this $35,000 level is really acting as a pretty good support right now. We've been unable to close a daily candle below this $35,000 level, and we've been able to put in a lot of really good trades from here. In fact, I think, I think uh, personally, I've taken three longs from this level, um, and so it's it's been it's been pretty good. And um, if we lose the $35,000 level and we are closing candles below the level on like you know the daily time frame then I would be looking down again to this $29,000 level. And if we lose that, then um, I'd be looking down to the $26,000 level. And the reason for that is because the $26,000 level is the, uh, the 618 of the entire run from the corona dump to the all-time high. That $26,000 level really is the the 618 which is a, a very good Fibonacci level to look for a reaction off of in fact if we pull out the fib here and we take it from the corona dump which happened uh, way back here March 2020 and we just pull it from down here and we pull it to our all-time high we can see that that golden ratio is right here at that twenty six thousand dollar level so what if we lose that twenty six thousand dollar level where are we going to go? Are we going to go back down to thirteen hundred? I'm sorry, thirteen thousand. Are we going to go back down to to nine thousand, to uh, three thousand? Well, I'm I'm not expecting that to happen. Uh, to be honest, I'm absolutely not expecting that to happen. In fact, right now, I'm encouraged by the fact that we have been able to hold the 0.5 uh, Fibonacci level, which is also this thirty-five thousand dollar level, as as our support. As our support. Now let's take a look at Market Cipher because um, you know there's been a lot of talks about Market Cipher is about to print, you know, and it did print actually this green bottom on the daily time frame. Is that bullish? Isn't that bullish? Well, here's the thing: we can see that the money flow is uh, has turned red on Market Cipher B on the daily time frame. Right, we've curved below the zero line. And the money flow is officially red. If we go to the 12 hour, we can zoom in a little bit and kind of see what's been happening, what has been happening. Now, there's something encouraging that I would like to point out, which is the fact that we can, if we can kind of see, if we go to like the eight hour time frame, we can kind of see that um, you know we we are getting some kind of a a bullish divergence, you could say, right, uh, where momentum is ticking up a little bit, and um, Price is coming down, but what we really want to see on the daily time frame is we want to see this anchor wave print right here, and then we want to be seeing something that looks like you know where we come up and we print consecutively higher waves. We we want to see the direction on the daily time frame come back up. If we can start printing a trigger wave on the daily time frame, then that could signal to us you know some some real movement to the upside, some real movement to the upside. And the good news is, you know, the downward movement, it cannot last forever. It cannot last forever. Um, you know, even if, we, even if we come down more, eventually we're going to have to get a bounce off of one of these levels and uh, come back up again. And personally, I am, looks like, just based off the daily time frame market cipher, it looks like we are going to come print another red wave somewhere in here, come down lower. And... Uh, if we do print a higher green wave on the daily time frame as price is coming down lower that would give us a really powerful bullish divergence on the daily time frame and so let's take a look at some other levels that we can mark out here on or just using regular support and resistance on the daily time frame uh, shout out to memory man um, says money flow no go absolutely bro um, absolutely uh, Chaco Bond says the bears here perhaps guys perhaps and if this you know first of all we have to we have to realize that right now Bitcoin is up um, you know it, it, it's it's 10x basically uh, since since last year right 
um, it was three thousand dollars last March, and now now Bitcoin is is over thirty five thousand dollars. So you know if you've been if you've been in Bitcoin for over a year, you're still up, you know, ten x, which is which is a phenomenal investment. In fact, you know, Bitcoin is the best performing asset, really, of all time. But let's take a look at some support and resistance levels that we can keep our eyes on. The first one that really stands out to me is right here. If we take a look at this, um, about the $23,000 level. I'm going to go ahead and mark a line right here. And really all I'm doing, guys, is I'm looking at these daily candles. And I'm trying to find places where price has found a sticking point. We can see that after we broke out of the 20 k right, we had these massive daily candlesticks. I remember that day very awesome day price found a sticking point right about here I would say right here at about twenty three thousand dollars so let's let's mark out some regions where price we can expect price to to come down to and find a sticking point if we lose uh, some of these levels shout out to family room films who says uh, bless you brother hey bless you too he says, do you suggest Bybit with a VPN or is Femex just as good? Bought your course and plan to start tomorrow because he is our sustainer. Um, referring, I'm, I'm sure you are, to the Lord. Yes, amen. He is our sustainer. Travis uh, Jansma says, I sound like I'm stuffy. I am a little bit stuffy, guys. I uh, I have some, some kind of thing going on here. Um, not too sure what but uh i'm still alive um i i like to use bybit i don't really use femex but i hear femex is just as good i'm a big fan of bybit with the vpn i like to use bybit with multiple accounts i think it's really important so that you can long and short at the same time like right now i'm short on bitcoin up 575 percent i'm long on bitcoin up 91 percent um and the reason i'm able to do this is because i use two trading accounts so these orange lines I've marked out down here are other support and resistance areas that I, I feel that, you know, if we are to lose the 618 of the entire run from the corona dump, these are areas that, that we can look for. If I turn on the VPVR indicator, we can get some other high volume areas. Um, let's see here. Let's see what we got going on here. So I see that we have a high volume area. Uh, right here right here so so this is a daily support and resistance and it's also a high volume node uh, as well as this right here this level right here 19247 this is a um, a daily level and it's also a high volume node so really all we're doing right now guys is we're looking for places where price historically has found a sticking point and we can know that if price comes down to one of these levels, we can look for some kind of a reaction off of that level. Just like how when we come down to this level, we get the bounce off of it. Um, you know, we, we can expect um, bounces off of these other lower levels as well, especially if we find confluence. Like this is a daily level and a high volume node. Let's go to the weekly actually and zoom out here. And uh, wow, this this is actually pretty pretty interesting right here. So, so basically, the point of control, uh, the highest volume price that Bitcoin has traded at ever, uh, well, not ever, but since uh, November 2018, since Bybit started, is about nine thousand dollars. So, it's actually pretty crazy. If if we if we lose the <laughs> The nineteen thousand is is very likely we could come back down to the nine thousand dollar region because really, you know, we don't have very much price action or volume in this entire section right here. We we just don't, we just don't. So will we potentially see a nine thousand dollar Bitcoin? Well, if we just take from the all time high to the nine thousand dollar level, that's about an eighty five percent correction. Eighty five percent correction. If we go to Bitcoin and we check out the old uh, bull market here, let's let's just see how much we lost when we lost this uh, all-time high, came down to the low, an 84.22% correction. So if this is truly the beginning of the bear market 
and we're just going to lose all these supports here, guys. Um, the bottom, if this really is the end of everything, right? The bottom of this market very well could be around 9391 I'm sorry, $9,416. Now, we have to put this into perspective. If this actually is going to happen, we need to understand that that's still 3x from the low of last year, okay? 300%. And if Bitcoin does come down to this level, uh, this would be an amazing opportunity to get into a, um, a long-term position to, to really... Uh, stack your, your your crypto i mean hopefully everybody has been taking profits on the way up here right um you know i always preach that you should always be taking profits on the way up you should never be taking profits on the way down because if you're taking profits on the way up if you, if you buy here then you take a little profit out here then you take a little profit out here take a little profit out here take a little out here take a little out here take a little out here um, you are going to have a lot of capital set aside so that when the inevitable does happen and we come back down to these lows, you ha you can buy back in. And, um, you know, that's why it's so important to scale out regardless of the time frame you're trading. That's why when I, when I post scalp trades in the Discord, I'm always taking profit on the way up because you want to lock in your profits. Shout out to Nawab Hussein who says, how can a market recover and still be in a bull market at 9K? Oh, I'm not talking about, uh, if we come down to 9K, I, we're, we're definitely not in a bull market. But here's the thing. Bitcoin, it recovers very quickly. I mean, historically, Bitcoin recovers quite quickly. I mean, so quickly compared to, to other assets. I mean, take a look, you know, when we, when we had this dump, uh, the Corona dump, right? We just shot right up from there. People saw this as an amazing buying opportunity. And I guarantee, I guarantee if Bitcoin comes back down to this area, right? This $9,000 area right here where, where we where we have such a, such a, a strong support. Um, I mean, look at this. If we just draw a line at the $9,000 region, this was a support during the last bull market. It was a resistance. And then it was a support again in 2019. A resistance, a resistance, a support again, a support again, a support again. Um, you know, I, I can't see Bitcoin coming much lower than this now after it, it's, it's gained so much attention, so much, so many institutions are investing in Bitcoin. And if we ever do come down to these levels, you, you can guarantee that people are biting at the bit to get into Bitcoin at these levels. Absolutely, 100%. Um, Yeah, so so the, these are the, you know these these are the levels that that I'm really looking at, and up until the point that we lose some of these levels, right? I mean, we don't. Here's the thing. Here's here's the truth. Until we're we're losing this level with the daily candles, right? And we're we're losing 29k. We don't really need to think for right now beyond this region, right? In fact, every trade that I've made. In the past week, really, has been in this general range right here. Um, Nawab Hussein says, "Do I think a, re a relief rally is overdue?" Yeah, and here I absolutely, and I could totally see us coming down. I can totally see us losing these supports, coming down to the twenty-six thousand dollar level. And from there, getting a getting a bounce to the upside, 100%. I could see that, and the reason is because, you know, if we pull the fib from the low from that Corona dump, um, we could see that that 618 level, that 618 level, that golden ratio, right in here. I know this is kind of sloppy, but it's right there, at the uh, the $26,000 level. So really the two places that I think we could come down to, if we're going to come down more and then get a bounce and continue to the upside, the first one is the $26,000 and the second one would be that that $23,000 range right here. The not range but but zone. The $23,000 zone. Let me let me turn off some of these just so that we have a cleaner chart right now. 
just so we have a cleaner chart. So, um, yeah, I've got just the fib on right now. So you guys can see right here, this this is the, the, the golden ratio between the 618 and the 0.65. Right in the middle of there, we've got this $26,000 level, which also, you know, if we draw just a, a horizontal line in that level, we can see that we did this did act as a support level. Um, and then, of course, if we lose this, I would expect us to also get a bounce off of this $23,000 level. And I think it's very possible that we could come down here, and this could, these these levels could be our bottom. This could be the bottom right here, before we start to make our way back up. And we could, you know, come back up really quick, or it could just be something where we're consolidating for a long time and slowly making our way up. Slowly, slowly making our way up. Okay. Those are the two possibilities that I see. But right now, guys, before, before we start to get that bearish, you know, take a look at the fact that we, we really have been holding support here. We've been holding support right here for, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six days. This is, this is the, the sixth daily candle that has opened above this, um, this 0.5 level, this 0.5 fib level right here. Um, let's see here. Chaco Ban, shout out to Chaco Bon, Chaco Ban, who says, um, and the bear will make everyone rich. Please hug the bear and don't be afraid. It will give you the opportunity you missed. Bear will tell you to buy between 10 and 20 K. Um, yeah, that, that you know that's that's true as well. To Chaco, absolutely, a, a a bear market will give people an opportunity. The problem is most people don't buy the lows; they buy the highs and sell the lows. It's important, you know, if you want to get into cryptocurrency, that you're buying the lows. And uh, if if you believe in this asset class, you know, it's important that you that you buy in general, right? You just buy in general. Um, I always buy Bitcoin regardless of the price, regardless of the price. I will always buy Bitcoin. It, it is pretty crazy though to, to, you know, after everything that's happened where we've, we've gone up to $65,000 where we're looking at these levels seriously now, you know, like the, the $26,000 level, um, right around here and then the the twenty three thousand dollar level and really guys if, if we do come down to those areas i will definitely be looking for for a nice swing long position but until then i'm going to keep my shorts open um i'm going to keep my shorts open. i mean there's really no reason for me to close them we're in a we're, we're clearly in a downtrend right on the four hour time frame look at this i mean this is the four hour time frame we are just Lower, low, lower, high, 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 lower, low, lower, high. And now it's interesting, right? Though we're starting to bottom out. So let's take a look at this, okay? We have gotten this trend line. This trend line has kind of been our resistance that we have been unable to break out of. I think this is something that's important to keep an eye on because if we're able to come above this resistance right here, I think that we we very well could see a significant move to the upside, and we've been trading this this trend line has been our resistance since you know May twelfth, right? So we're pushing twelve days, pushing twelve days, almost two weeks that this has been our resistance. So if we're able to come and break above this resistance, I really think we could see a significant move to the upside. Um, Hang on, those those are old trades that I had going on. It would be really, really interesting to see what happens if we were to break this this resistance. Um, where's that January all time high? Yes, okay. And then the low of the dump.
So yeah, let let's let's see what happens because if we continue on this trend line and it pushes us down below 29817 which was the low of the previous dump then in my mind we are absolutely heading down to to 26k 23k those levels but if we break out of this and we're able to hold above this um if we're able to hold above this $35,000 level right cuz right now we're we're squeezing in right you can kind of say that we have a a descending triangle which which is a bearish pattern in general right it's a bearish pattern in general but if we break above this thing then I, I I think we could come and see us hit the 41k level again and if we come above the 41k level then for me the next level is 45,000 and then the next level is 47,000 and then 51 and we could continue up from there and until that happens if we just focus on trading this level to level literally shorting the resistances longing the supports so like we're come back up to this trend line start to look for a short position right don't assume we're going to break out of this thing assume we're going to reject off um resistance because resistance is called resistance for a reason also keep in mind guys this is also a very high volume area right here at about 37 so if we do continue up here and we come up to this um trend line we would be rejecting off a double resistance so you know look for a short around this area if we come back down to these lows especially the low of the dump you know look for a long position from down there and you don't even have to look down there let's go to the daily time frame zoom out a little bit and um you know we could see that we got back here in january we got these this these lows right about here as well so you know look we wicked down right to these previous lows that we had in january so it's really important that you mark out your levels and you do your technical analysis and you enter your trades according to your analysis when you see price coming down to a level or coming up to a level that's where you should be looking for a trade um and of course i like to use market cipher for confluence right uh, for example we're coming up right here um you know today earlier today uh, well i guess it's currently yesterday but we came up here right and we rejected off this trend line and what was happening as we were rejecting off the trend line well let's take a look and see what was happening as we reject off this uh this trend line we can see that um as we're rejecting off the trend line market cipher is showing us clearly clearly right we're coming down it's uh, this is the hour time frame it's very clear we're coming down we're printing lower waves right and we're coming up to a resistance we get one rejection two rejections and this time now we're rejecting off this trend line and boom we get we get we get thrown down from there like if you just mark your levels and um use market cipher for confluence you will get those good entries and if you want to learn this stuff guys if you don't know how to do your technical analysis i do recommend you take a course and i do offer a course um obviously you know i i like the course i i offer because i created it but this is basically everything i wish i knew before i started trading um this will give you the knowledge and the skills you need to become a confident profitable trader where you can look at a chart mark the levels and then have the plan and the confidence you need to make successful trades we go through everything from technical analysis if you don't know anything about a chart uh how to mark your levels how to use volume how to use market cipher and um i mean really this this course has helped so many people who were completely new to trading who are now actually making money i get messages every day from people who say jay thank you so much um this has really changed my my trading people who've been trading for a while uh feel like they're they're struggling to be consistent and then of course you know i give three strategies that i use on a daily basis that that have already been back tested and shown to be profitable check it out at jasoncaspertrading.com i will drop a uh i think it's a 17 percent discount if you go to jasoncaspertrading.com and uh this is the code i love y'all use that coupon code 
and uh, you'll get 17% off. Um, now that I'm in the chat, let's see what's going on in here. Shout out to um, Clutch Spawns who says, So on the daily chart, if you start a support trend line on March 12th, It'll hit all the candles on September 3rd through October. I see this being absolute max pain. Could you take a look and see what you think? Yeah, let me take a look at that. Uh, shout out to Clutch Spawns again, who says, um, key price reactions, 58K, 40K, 34K, 30K, 24K, 19K. Yeah, um, so let me let me take a look at that. Since, since you, uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, shout out to Stephen Hill who says I'm boring. I'm sorry, Stephen Hill. I usually try and keep this a little less boring, but I'm I'm actually exhausted right now. I'm so exhausted. I've been out all weekend. It's been a holiday weekend for me. I don't know if anybody celebrates Shavuot, if you're Jewish, or uh, if you just follow the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. So I've been out partying, partying it up. For the past two days, guys. So I'm exhausted. Okay, so a trend line starting on March 12th, 2020. Is this from the bottom spawns that you're talking about here? Let's let's zoom out. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this for you, man. Because you gave me the super chat. I, I think you're talking about this, right? So, okay, so he thinks this this could be the the area of max pain, which would bring us down to about you know eighteen, possibly nineteen thousand dollars, and you know. This there is there is a lot of support in this area. There absolutely is. You know, if we turn on our VPVR, we've got right at the 19,352. I mean, this this is a support, right? So, you know, if we came down here, that would that would give us a, in my mind, that would give us a really nice area of support from which we could look to higher levels, right? Because if we come down here, I do think that if this was the the Earth, that the Moon's orbit would probably be around up here at the time. Because we do know that when Bitcoin came up to the $65,000 area, you know, the Earth was here and the Moon was, was down here at the 618. So when we went to the Moon, we came right down to the 618. But we just need a little bit of time for, for things to cool off in here. A little bit of time for things to cool off. Um, Russia is selling, says Gold Tau. Uh, the course does not work, says Semsai Istvan Balis. Um, what do you mean by that, man? Uh, shout out to Clutch Spawns for the super chat. Thank you, brother. Uh, yes, um, it's all hypothetical, right? But absolutely, that's what we do. That's why we do our technical analysis. We just come up with things that could happen. So that way, when they do happen, we have a plan. If you look at the chart... And you say, okay, if Bitcoin comes back down to this level of 30,000 or if we come even lower to 29,000, I would be looking for a long position right there. Uh, keep an eye on these levels, right? Keep an eye on this trend line right here. If we break above the trend line and we break above, you know, 37,000, then expect higher, higher price action. This has been a resistance and when we break a resistance it becomes a support when we lose a support it becomes a resistance if we're trading this level to level then um you know we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of success we're going to have a lot of success shout out to alfredo corona uh, don jones asks would it be smart to buy bitcoin right now well here's the thing don jones it really depends it really depends um are you are you trading short term? Like, are you are you looking to buy now and sell in two hours? Are you looking to sell in three days, three years, three decades? Yeah, 
You know, that that's that's what you have to that's what you have to take into account. Personally, I think this is a, a great time to buy Bitcoin. I have personally taken some of my uh some of my profits that I've taken on the way up and, and reinvested it into the Bitcoin. Person, that's just me, right? I've, I've exchanged some of my tether for Bitcoin right now. And we could come down lower. And that's the thing. That's why it depends. We could come down lower. I mean, let's take a look again at the last bull, uh, bleh, the last bear market, right? Let's take a look at that thing. Let's take a look at that last bear market, right? So this was the last bear market. I'm sorry, that's not the last bear market. This is the last bear market, okay? Let's say, okay, we're crashing, we're crashing. People are like, all right, this is the bottom, okay? I'm going to buy here. Well, guess what? Come even lower, okay? Come even lower. So people say, okay, I'm going to buy here. Um, unless you bought the very bottom, right? It's hard to know when the bottom is. That's why it's good if you're in this for the long term to buy low <laughs> and this is definitely low compared to what we're, where we were at this is this is a good place to to get some right if you're trying to get some you're trying to get some you're trying to get some all right if you're trying to get some this could be a good time shout out to clutch spawns thank you um thank you for being here bro if you're a bro i assume you're a bro how many trades do I post per week in my Discord? I try and post as many as possible. Unfortunately, this week I I I posted. Um, I was a little weird with the postings in there. Like the the last trade that I posted in here, I was outside covered in mud when I entered the trade, and I tried to post it from my phone, and I was a little weird doing it. And I had typos, and it was a mess. I'm going to be working on this. But basically, what happened was I entered. Uh, at 34, 575, and um, I basically rode this rode this thing up, rode this thing up to uh, to 38, 239 was was the final take profit that we hit up there, and um, it was a really good long trade. Uh, and posted this on Friday, um, and then of course you know I, today or. I had a buy order at 32 because I had a level there. It's a smaller position right here. And uh, that, that got hit, and it's already up 100%. So that's pretty cool. And then I've got these shorts open. And, and these shorts, this Bitcoin short has been short from 58K, 59K almost. And that was a trade that I did post in the Discord. And um, I still got it open. Still got it open. I've been adding to it as we come down whenever I think that we've come to a good resistance. And, um, you know, whenever I post shorts in the Discord, right? If I post a short in the Discord, like uh, this short that uh, we took. Where do we take it? Right here, right? This short, I added more to my swing trade here, but I also scalped this from my scalp account. This was a nice short that we took. It was nice. We got a pretty big drop. That was a pretty big candle that we got right there that was a good trade for me um okay let me pop back in the chat guys how much leverage did i end up using on the long from 32 um let me check i can check right now um it's 10x. It's 10x. My entry was exactly 32,000, like on the dot, because that's where I had my order set. My liquidation price is uh, 29, um, which which was would have been my stop, which would have been a good stop loss, right? Because 29, uh, a little bit under 29, because that's you know if we lose that level, then I, I'm not trying to stay in a long there. Uh, yes, AKK, I will replace the lagging vids in the course. Absolutely, I will. I'm working on it right now. Uh, yes, uh, I do have open positions now. 
these are my open positions right here. Bitcoin long, Bitcoin short, Ethereum short. Thomas Del Paso wants to know, do I think it's going to... Oh, wow. Okay, so Darren H says the trend line is broken. Let's check this out. Let's check this out, guys. Altcoins are pumping. Uh, my trend line is not broken, but maybe we don't have the same trend line here. Um, you know, one thing... I one thing I would say is it does look like, right, that on the four hour, we're getting a slight, a, a slight uptick in momentum as price continues to form lower lows. I would really like to see if we can break this trend line and this resistance right here at about 37K. You know, then I, I would I would see us come back up to 42. And if we do come back up to 42, guys, be looking for a short here, right? This is resistance. This is our resistance. So great opportunity to short at 42K. You know, if we come back down to these lows, great opportunity to long. And then look at 35,000 as the midpoint, right? 35,000 is the midpoint. If we're coming below 35,000, it means we're coming lower. If we're coming... Above the 35,000, it usually means we're going to go higher. I mean, just look. We get the bounce off 35,000. We get the bounce off 35,000. We come, we drop below 35,000, and we touch these lows. We drop below 35,000, and we touch these lows. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, great, it's great to be able to mark these levels out. But I don't see anything really pumping too much, guys. I do not. Let me drop back in the chat here. Guys, like the video. If we can get this thing up to 1,000 likes, I will give away the course for free. If we can get this thing up to 1,000 likes. We got 1,000 people in here, only 300 likes. Um, that's crazy. That's crazy. All right, let's take a look at the one-hour time frame here. So on the one-hour time frame, it, it is kind of nice to see the fact that we did get the bounce off of the support. We're coming up. The VWAP is, is looking like we could still come up even more. I, the only thing that discourages me, guys, is the fact that we're getting this this top of the wave here as we're coming up to the resistances, which makes me think we are not going to be able to come above this, right? We, we really would need to see some, some, some intense momentum um, as we're coming up to these levels. We would want to see those lower time frames really starting to give us a clear sign to the upside, right? We would want to see this VWAP on the one hour start to point up really high like that. We would want to see the lower time frames, like the 10 minute time frame, showing us increased momentum. Right now, the 10 minute time frame is showing us that momentum's coming down, right? We're, we're, we're printing lower waves here. At least it looks like we're about to. Um, you know, if, if this wave clips right here and we start to print lower waves as the money flow is coming down, that's a sign that we're not going to break that resistance. And if we're not going to break that resistance, guys, be looking for those short positions. Um, you know, short the resistances, long the supports. You will have a lot of success doing that, a lot of success. And again, if you want to learn this stuff and you're interested in the course, jasoncaspertrading.com, I'll drop that discount. This is 17% discount. Boom, boom, boom. Use that code. ADA and link pumped. Let's take a look at ADA and link. Some of my two favorite uh, coins that I'm actually highly invested in. Link pumped. ADA pumped. Um, yeah, ADA pumped. Let's take a look at this pump here. A nice, uh, nice 5% pump. Um, but guys, I mean, Bitcoin... You know, basically today gave us like a 15% pump, you know, in the last day. Um, this is this is actually this is actually looking pretty good right now for Bitcoin. The fact that the the half hour time frame is is showing these high momentum waves here. If if we can get the money flow to cross over from the red into the blue on Market Cipher, this uh, trigger wave prints. And we keep printing, you know, waves above the zero line like that. We might be able to break that resistance. We might be able to break that resistance. 
And guys, um, if you don't have Market Cipher, you can get a 5% discount if you click the link in the description of this video. Let me pop back into the chat and I'll take some questions. I will take some questions and then I'm going to head out. Um, the VIP live stream will be tomorrow morning. Uh, I was going to do it tonight, but I'm just tired and I want to have a fresh caffeinated mind when I'm doing my technical analysis and giving trade setups. I don't want to just do that willy-nilly, guys. I want to take it very seriously. So I hope you understand if you are a Patreon. Um, I hope you understand. Uh, clutch spawns mostly swings or scalps in the server. Uh, it's like a lot of times they're scalps and sometimes they will turn into swings. I'm a big fan of taking profit while I am in profit. So here's here's how I usually roll. Right, I will enter a, um, a a short. Let's okay. So basically, all these trades were were scalps, right? Um, like right here, right? Entering a scalp long right here. Um, entered at thirty five, right off that same level we're looking at and flirting with right now. Okay, entered that trade, um, and then we hit take profit one right we hit take profit one and what I do is I will take profit out of the trade I will take profit out of the trade and I will move my stop loss to the entry okay and I will take you know 40 50 percent of the trade out as a scalp and then let the rest run and move my stop loss into the entry what this does is it ensures I'm either gonna win little or I'm going to win a lot. And so what starts as a scalp will, will turn into a swing because really the short that I'm in from 58 point something K started out as a scalp. But, you know, once you lock in those profits and price stays in a downtrend, there's no reason to exit the short. And so all you do is you add to your position uh, when you come up to the resistances, right? When you come up to the resistances. So, you know, this this trade right here, you can see here I had moved my stop loss uh, to the entry. And, you know, I had taken, I think, 40% out of the trade right up here. Uh, or maybe even more, I forget. And uh, I don't know, but the, the, the trade kept going. It, it kept going up kept going up eventually this thing ended up getting stopped out in profit right got stopped out in profit now then I took a short right this trade got stopped out in profit next trade I took was a short this was a short scalp right but I always set my take profits like pretty far because I, I don't know how low it would go and uh, sometimes you just get into a trade and you just uh, be just chilling out there for a while and, and you 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 still have maybe 30% of your position there and you're like well I might as well just let this thing run because it just keeps going up it just keeps going up you know so I I will try I, I always you know in the in the VIP sessions that I do I talk about swing trade entries where I'm looking for awesome swing trade entries um, you know that's that's usually the VIP live streams I'm doing a lot swing trade setups and then the ones I post in the discord for the altcoins if I'm trading on Binance futures you know these things are usually scalp trades they're usually scalp trades uh, let me come back into the chat here okay so if, if you're interested in the discord uh, you can you can uh, become a patreon there's a link in the description and if you're interested in the course, the trading course, JasonCasperTrading.com. And here's a 17% discount right here. Boom, boom. All right. Yeah, if this stuff is above your head, guys, the course will really help you out. Seriously. Crypto Face just went live. Cool, cool. Um, I guess we're not going to get 1,000 likes on this video, guys. I guess we're not. And uh, I guess everyone's going to go watch Crypto Faith. Um, yeah, so, okay. Well, 
then I guess I'm going to head out. But uh, thank you guys. God bless all of you. Um, God bless all of you. And um, let me uh, let me give you guys a blessing. A blessing in the name of the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. And this blessing is uh, God gave it to us uh, so that he could place his name upon us. And in Hebrew, it's Yevarechacha Adonai Vayishmarecha Ya'er Adonai Penav Alecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai Penav Alecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom Vashem Yeshua HaMashiach Elohei Israel, which in English means May the Lord bless you and protect you May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace In the name of Yeshua Jesus the Messiah, the God of Israel Amen. Uh, I do appreciate all of you, and I pray that the Lord does reveal himself to each one of you in a very personal way. And uh, thank you, Doug Daly, for the like. Thank you, John Wick. May God bless you. Um, Ali Youssef is confused. Bitcoin is going to stay um, within the levels that are, are marked out. Uh, and if it loses one of those levels, it will go down to the next level. And if it comes above one of those levels, it will go up to the next level. Absolutely. That's that's how it always works. That's how it always works. Um, yes, yes. So people want to know, I'd love to hear a synopsis of how you are Jewish and a follower of Christ. Um... Well, you know, it doesn't matter if a person is Jewish or not Jewish. The thing is that uh, the Messiah is Jewish, right? God took on flesh, and he uh, he did that uh, through through the, the lineage of the, of the Jewish people, right, from the tribe of Judah. So, if you are a uh, follower of Christ, the Messiah, right, um, whether you're Jewish or not. It, there's it's a uh, it's a very Jewish thing. It's a very Jewish thing. It's the most Jewish thing that you could possibly do. Is to follow the Messiah. The discount code um, J F Ro J from D. This is it right here. I space love y'all, cause I love y'all. Tasty Trees, shout out to you, Tasty Trees. Um, Gold Tau says 7K is the floor. Okay, so the Patreon levels. The Patreon levels are level one is um, basically you get access to the VIP channels in the Discord where we talk about um, Bitcoin trading and all this right here, right? The VIP section and where I post TA. Um, like levels that I'm looking for, um, you know, like, like this kind of stuff, right? Um, where I post technical analysis and then I do weekly live streams, which I will be doing one tomorrow where I basically go through for the week, Ethereum, Bitcoin, different altcoins and talk about swing trade entries that I am eyeing up. In other words, Trades that I will be looking to take if price gets to that level. Now, level two gives you all the same stuff, but it actually also, I will post the trades I enter, whether they be altcoin trades um, or Bitcoin or Ethereum trades. And um, that's really the only difference is the trades, which are not meant to be copied, right? They're just for entertainment purposes only. Paper trading, perhaps, you know. But, uh, yeah. Shout out to K and K Dark Horse. Yeah. Yeah, Nate uh, Haslam says, but don't Jews believe that Jesus wasn't the Messiah according to Judaism? Um, well, yeah, I mean, most, most, most modern uh, Jewish people do not believe that Jesus was the Messiah, but, you know, if we go back 2,000 years, all the original believers in Jesus were Jewish, right? They were Jewish. I mean, modern Judaism is, uh, 
obviously they, they don't uh, they don't believe that. But um, you know, every single follower of Jesus was Jewish up until uh, Acts chapter ten, really. If if you read the Bible. Maker coin is exploding. <laughs> yeah, Haksamea, uh, Maris, uh, Alamun. Yep, Haksamea. It was uh, it was Shavuot uh, for some people. I mean, people count the the Omer differently, right? So if if you celebrate Shavuot, happy Shavuot, happy Pentecost. Uh, Day Day uh, asks, is this a Bible study or a cryptanalysis? The cryptanalysis is over, guys. So uh, sometimes we do wax biblical on this channel, you know. Sometimes sometimes we pull out the uh, the Bible, right? Sometimes we, we pull out the Bible. Sometimes we, we pull out the Hebrew, you know. Because uh, who doesn't like Hebrew, right? Who doesn't love Hebrew? Who doesn't love to read Hebrew? I love to read Hebrew. It's one of my favorite things to do, is to read Hebrew. I don't know, Jay, when a, a federal tax increase would happen. I don't know. It, there's talks about it, right? I mean, oh, man. Things are just so crazy right now. Uh... Level three on the Patreon. I think there's only two levels on there. Um, is Big Butts a power squatter? Uh, who could also be an Instagram squat fitness celebrity? Well, she's not into being a fitness uh, celebrity on Instagram, but she she does like to squat. She likes to squat. She loves her squats for sure. Shout out to Big Butts twenty eight. Um, Big Butts twenty eight. Is uh, she is cool? She is a cool chick. Shout out to uh, Reese Clements, who says, uh, "Loving the course. I'm glad so." Uh, D. Paulo Anthony says, "From your experience, letting ride really pay off, considering the times it hits your entry, and you end up with small gains." Well, I always lock in. I, here's the thing: I always lock in a significant amount of gains. I always lock in a significant amount of gains. And if I really think that it's coming back down, like these longs lately, I've been moving my stop loss to take profit one. Um, because, yeah, I will, I will lock in 60% of that trade. And I, when, I, when I trade, you know, I, I'm putting big positions on, on here. I'm putting big positions here. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not trading with, with small, small positions. So 60% of my trade is, is a good win for me. Uh, even forty percent is it is it acceptable? I mean, I'm not trying to make a million dollars in a trade. I'm just trying to make enough to get the basic stuff in life, right? Food, pay the bills, you know. Maybe take my wife out for a fancy dinner if we ever get a chance to go out alone without the kids ever again, which may or may not ever happen. But you know, shout out to Crypto Bot who's Hebrew and a believer in Yeshua. Um, I don't know what you're talking about there, crypto bot. Sounds interesting. Um, Ryan, I've, I've never heard of the Passion Translation. Never have. To be honest with you guys, I stick to uh, really... Uh, I'm not... If I'm just reading the Bible for fun in English, I I, I do like to read the um, the King James version only because um, I find it to be a very literal translation from the Hebrew and from the Greek. Although I know it is from the Byzantine manuscripts, and there's debate over you know whether that's the best manuscript family. I don't know. I don't care. But really, if I'm studying the Bible, I will study the original languages. And, um, you know, I have a lot of tools to do that. 
Uh, Aaron Patterson just joined. Do I believe it's going to continue down? If so, how far? Well, uh, it's a good thing you ask, man, because uh, I have an answer for you. Okay. If we lose $35,000 again, right, if, if we are unable to hold this level, 35 k and we come back down, then I'm expecting us to come back down to these lows here, okay? Um, 31 k to 29 k right, somewhere in this zone right here. And if we lose that, I'm expecting us to come down to 26. And if we lose 26, I'm expecting us to come down to 23. So there you have it. If we come down lower, we're going to come down to the low 30s, high 20s. If we lose that 26, if we lose that 23. That's exactly what I am expecting. Yes, sir. Yes, the, the course the course shows you how to pull out your fib in public with confidence, Max. So uh, you guys know I love to pull out my fib in public, right? I just whip this thing out and stretch it out, right, across the whole screen. And it's intimidating for people, okay? People are not used to seeing uh, a grown man pull out a fib in public, okay? The course will teach you how to do that with confidence, for sure, for sure. And it's not financial advice, you know. Um, shout out to Elizabeth Moon. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, Muhammad, shout out to you, bro. Thanks for being here again. A frequent of the channel. I am 30, okay. Uh, I'm 30. So I'm, I'm old. I'm old. Oh, uh, Kevin Price, it's still processing. Did you pay with crypto, bro? Hit me up in the Discord. If there's an issue, I can fix it. Hit me up in the Discord or send me an email. If there, if anybody has an issue with the course, let me know and I can fix it. Sometimes there's an issue if you pay in Bitcoin. Joshua Baldwin wants to know if I ever read the ESV. Not a big fan of the ESV. I, I, don't, I don't find it to be a... I'm not saying it's a bad translation... Just, I don't like the way they translate, um, especially the Hebrew. I'm not saying it's wrong, I just don't like the way they do it. They, like, translate it a lot of sentences backwards. I, I don't I don't like that. I'm not a fan. Not a fan. No hate, though. No hate. Uh, Hoddle Dis Pussy says, can we talk about Bitcoin, please? Uh, guys, the stream is over on it, basically. Like, you know, like, all the TA stuff is over. Right now, I'm just I'm just talking. Um, uh, Nate Haslam was my favorite books of the Bible. My favorite book of the Bible is um, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, right? Sefer Yeshayahu. Um, Neo Hev Yeshayahu. Because. Um, you know, within the book of Isaiah is the entire entire Bible in one book, right? You've got everything in there from the uh, the rebellion in the beginning all the way to the new heavens and the new earth. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to Nine Finger Nine Finger Seventy. Uh, level two. The trade info is posted literally right after I entered the trade, or right before. Yep, I need to chat charge my charge my uh, my computer. Yep, five percent is about to die. Um, it's about to die. Yeah. So once it dies, it dies. You know, uh, Petty K asks, when you pray, who do you pray to? God, Jesus, or to the Spirit? You know, I, tra I pray to uh, Hashem, right? The, the creator of heaven, heaven and earth. Um, you know, God is one, right? But uh, it's, it's a big mystery as well, but... You know, also, uh, we know, we know that Jesus himself is Hashem, 
And the, the Spirit is also Hashem. I mean, we see this from the very beginning of the first verse in the Bible, right? First two verses, Bereshit bara Elohim, et hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz, ve'ha'aretz ha'etah tohu vavohu v'choshech al penei tehom ve'ruach Elohim merachevet al penei ha'mayim, right? The, the Ruach Elohim, the, the Spirit of Elohim is, uh, is Himself creating, creating uh, the, the earth, right? He's present there in the creation. So uh, there, there's there's a mystery there, but there's there's clearly something, uh, some kind of plurality within the unity. It's a, it's a mystery. I mean, even you know when we read the book of Jeremiah and other other scriptures in the Tanakh that talk about the Messiah, he has attributes that only Hashem has. Um, you know, his his, his name is called. Um, in Jeremiah 23, the Messiah's name is actually called um, Hashem, right? Adonai, Tzid Kenu. Hey, hey, Big Buds 28. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Are you still listening to this? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Big Buds 28 in the house over here, guys. Shout out to Big Butts Twenty Eight. You have any other Bitcoin questions in here? Oh, good question. Sr wants to know what do I think about the Anunnaki theory? Um. Okay. Uh, don't know where to find your email or the Discord. Kevin Price. Kevin Price. Shoot me an email. Um, at invest invest cryptocurrency online at gmail.com yes 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 send me an email there Uh, shout out to Eduardo Mendez who says my Discord channel is awesome. Nice people, great resources to learn more about TA. Yeah, we have some awesome TA people in there, guys. Um, Samuel Bell says I can't yet tithe with Bitcoin. You know what? Yes, you can. You might not be able to tithe to a local congregation, synagogue, church, or whatever, but uh, we're not tithing to a place, right? We're tithing to the Lord. And you can absolutely give a tithe to the Lord with Bitcoin. How do you take partial profits on a short, says Marv, has none. Uh, what you do is you just simply do a buy order, right? If you're short on Bybit, inverse perpetual, you just do a sell order right there. Absolutely. Um, am I a pastor? No, I am not. Uh, yeah, I'm a messianic te technical analysis guy. Isaiah 53 is not read by many Jews. It is, but uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it's not. It's not in the the half tara cycle. And there's there's rumors that it used to be. I, I don't know if we can prove it one way or the other, one way or another. Uh, but I will say that you know the understanding of Isaiah 53 was messianic. They they understood it to be talking about the Messiah before. Jesus time okay this is very clear when we read the Targums the Targum Aramaic translation and commentary of um, Isaiah 53 actually clearly says it's talking about the Messiah in fact uh, I could prove it right now right here if I uh, if I take a look at uh, the Targums where do we where do we got them right here I got them right here so I'm a Bible nerd, right? Every Bible nerd needs to have the uh, the Targums. Here they are. Okay, we go to Isaiah 53. You know, behold, my servant will prosper. He will be high and greatly exalted. Right, we go to the Aramaic. And it says, um, you know, it says, behold, you know, he will be successful, my servant. Um Mashiacha, right? That's Aramaic for Mashiach, right? I mean, look at look at that, right? It's right here. It says Messiah, and then it goes on to talk about, you know, 
He was uh, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our well-being was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Right. Um, The Lord was pleased to crush him, to bring him to grief. He would render himself as a guilt offering. Uh, you know, he will bear their iniquities. You know, it's talking about the death of the Messiah. And, you know, when we, when we go back and we read the ancient commentaries, the ancient Jewish commentaries on this passage, before Jesus even was born, they knew this was talking about the Messiah. It's right here. I mean, you know, Messiah. So, um, you know, Isaiah 53 is, is a very beautiful passage of Scripture. You know. Joshua Baldwin, when were the Targums written? They were compiled after the Babylonian exile. In fact, I, I believe Ezra probably um, was the one. Targum just means translation. And I, I think um, when, when they came back, from the exile, and it says that uh, you know Ezra made known all the words of the Torah to the people. I think he was he was putting it into the Aramaic language. That's just my my own view. That's just my own view. Yeah, the Book of Enoch is pretty cool. I, I I'm I'm a fan of the Book of Enoch. <laughs> Blue. <st> <laughs> Blue Starlin says, WTF. Yeah, man, you know, we get kind of, we get rowdy up in here, right? On a Sunday night. we After we do our Bitcoin TA, we, we switch into the Bible TA over here. You know? G Republic says, looks like they will put Bitcoin down 20% from 63K to 12K. Um... I, you know, maybe, I, I, I don't know. How could I know? Really, all I do is I take it level to level. Uh, when exactly am I looking to short Bitcoin if it doesn't close up above this resistance line? So that's, that's a good question. That's a great question. So, you know, I personally, I don't like to take shorts unless we're rejecting off a level. I, that's just me. So, like, I wouldn't short in the middle of no man's land. What I would do is, you know, if I see something like this, okay, something like this right here where we come up and we take the level like we did right here, and then we come down but we get a retest and a rejection, then I would consider that a rejection of resistance and I would enter a short position. So let me just draw a little circle right here where, you know, on the six minute time frame, you can see that what happens is we, we lose the level and we get a retest and then we reject even farther and i would i would enter a short position there i'm not saying i i would i would say i would i would consider entering a short position right there cuz you could say also that you know um you, i mean cuz when we lose it here we come up above it but when we lose it here we retest and then fall below it that's where i would consider entering the short position okay so if i see that we are rejecting the level retesting it and then coming back down below um, I would I will potentially enter the short right there. Okay, enter the short right here. You can set your stop loss above the last swing low, or you can get a little riskier and, and set your stop loss, you know, just above the resistance a little bit. And then you know the way I set my take profits is I just look for historical levels of support and resistance. So you know I would take I would take profit you know right right around here because you you can see that price found a, a double bottom right here before coming up one place I would look to take profit um, but um, I you know I like to wait I like to wait and be patient like uh, you know on Friday um, you know when we were coming down to this thirty five thousand dollar level and I was looking for a long a lot of people were longing earlier and I was just waiting for price to come to the place that I had decided already that I was going to long from. And the same with shorts. I like to wait. I like to come up with a plan and wait. That's what I like to do. Uh, 
I agree, Magical Mayhem. We are in the days of Noah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where do I post my trade setups in Discord? In the... Um, in the... Um, the private VIP Discord where I have potential Bitcoin trades, potential ETH trades, potential altcoin trades, potential uh, altcoin pumps, and disclaimers, which says this none of this is financial advice, guys, for educational entertainment only. I'm not a financial advisor, guys. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a Bitcoin TA enthusiast up in here. And, um,. Let's see here. Yeah, shout out to Radical. Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah, Thomas. Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the belief in the Messiah spread to India early on. Muhammad Hasnain. Um... You know, Muhammad, uh, I would I would like to uh, just uh, encourage you to uh, you know to look into these things that you're you're pondering. You know, the uh, the Quran lends credence to the Torah and the Injil too, the New Testament, right? And if the Torah and the New Testament are are true, then uh, then Jesus has to be. Uh, God, right? I mean, you, we can read the Old and the New Testament to clearly see that the, that Messiah is God. And we can see all the way back in the book of Genesis that God, right, appears as a man many times, right? I mean, he appeared to Abraham. One of my favorite passages in Scripture is uh, Genesis 18, right? Um... This is the Targum. That's why it looks weird, but, you know, we're, um, it, I mean, it's very clear, right? Vayera alav Adonai ve'elone mamre. And, uh, and the Lord, right? The, the, the creator of heaven and earth, yod vav Hashem, appeared to Abraham in the plains of Mamre. And it says, um, it says, uh, Vaisa anav vayar vehine. Shloshah Nashim, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and behold, three men were stationed upon him, right? So the Lord appeared to Abraham as a man. He ate, he drank, he had dusty feet, right? If he can appear as a man and have a meal with Abraham, then he can appear as a man and um, play that role of the high priest, right? Just like it talks about in Isaiah 53, and uh, if the Quran says that the Torah and the prophets and the New Testament are reliable books given from God, then, you know, we, we need to take that seriously, right? Nick uh, Tonnery wants to know, what the F am I smoking, G? Hey, G, I'll tell you what I'm smoking. I'm smoking some of that, some of that Holy Spirit, man. Gotta try some of that. Try, gotta, gotta try some of that. Yep, yep, Nick. Yep, I'm smoking that burning bush, my friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good question, Antoine. If you pray for Bitcoin, will it help? That's a good question, man. <laughs> Give it a try. Give it a try. You know, ask the Lord if he will uh, help your Bitcoin investments. Shout out to Jose. That's a good man. Wow, I'm surprised that we still have 449 people in here. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool. I appreciate all of you. May the Lord bless all of you. What do I do in my free time? Uh, don't really have a lot of free time. 
Um, but you know what? I like to um, I like to study the scripture. And um, I like to I'm I'm a I'm a farmer, right? I'm a homesteader. I like to plant stuff and take care of my animals. You know. Shout out to Killer Skin Canoe. Came for the crypto, stayed for the gospel. Praise God. Uh, J Fry only came for the Bible study. Nice, nice. Um, crypto Face mentions me in his rap. Really, I'm not Crypto Face. Um, no, but but um, uh, potentially we'll be working with the Market Cipher team. Uh, to do some educational stuff, to do some educational stuff, Market Cipher Academy, coming soon, coming soon, we're working on it guys, we're working on it, it's taking some time, um, <laughs> Tim Dunn, asks what religion did Jesus practice well say that uh, he uh, he followed the uh, what we would call second temple period Judaism <laughs> that's what we would call it yeah I am Billy Casper uh, but he he has a, a rap about me crypto face has a rap about me Yeah, Memory Man brings up a good point. I mean, the the, the Talmud, at, at least the Talmud that we have today, um, was not really compiled until much, much later. Much, much later. Right, so Jesus, you know... He had, he had an issue... He had actually had an issue with... Um, with a... A lot of things at the time, a lot of a lot of religious practices. Will Bitcoin recover? Um, absolutely, absolutely, Bitcoin will recover. Cade asks, what if the whole thing about God and the chosen people was made up to control the masses? Well, they did a pretty bad job at doing that. Um, because, um, you know, it's funny, like, the, you know, the Bible is, is literally the only book that uh, clearly describes the destruction of the New World Order, right? Am I allowed to say the New World Order on, on YouTube? You know, I mean, um, all the things that are happening right now that are leading humanity into bondage, uh, you know, the, the scripture has a solution to that. And, um, you know, it's not a coincidence that, you know, for hundreds of years, uh, the common people were not allowed to read the Bible. I mean, there was literally a period of time where the Bible was stuck in a Latin language that most people could not read. Uh, it was because the the corrupt powers knew that if people started to actually read that book in their own language, uh, it would be bad for them, right? It would be bad for them. Clay Farnett says, if we eliminated governments and the mainstream media, everyone would get along much better. Absolutely. Absolutely, people would get along much better, Clay. But you know what? There's still a problem within humanity uh, which is humanity is is a fallen uh, creation, right? There is there is perversion within each one of us. That's why we need redemption, which is only possible through the work of the Messiah, His death, burial, and resurrection. If we got rid of mainstream media and governments, it would be better temporarily. But I guarantee 
that other evil forces would arise and try to enslave humanity because man is is bent on wickedness. That's just the reality of our condition. All right? Everybody is in the same boat. And so the only true answer to all these issues is found in the scripture, right? The redemption of mankind, the redemption of the creation. Cade brings up a good point, you know, if the Bible is real, by buying digital currency, we're helping build the infrastructure for a future government-backed RFID chip. I don't think it's going to be an RFID chip. I, I think that's old technology. I, I think it's probably going to be something else like nanotechnology that uh, can connect us all to the uh, to the Internet of Things. But anyway, I probably shouldn't talk about that on this YouTube channel. That, that could seriously get me blacklisted. Um, but I don't think that cryptocurrency is, you know, the mark of the beast. But I do think that it's definitely paving the way to that kind of technology, Kate. I think you're absolutely right. I think you're absolutely right. But keep in mind, the mark of the beast is something very specific um, where you're showing your allegiance to a specific uh, political and religious figure, right? Um, you know, the mark of the beast is you taking on showing and proclaiming your allegiance and your worship of um, a false a false god uh, somebody who proclaims to be god and, and right now bitcoin is not that so although it's a foreshadow of that there's a lot of things that are foreshadowing this mark i, I don't think we can say for certain that that bitcoin is that or that anything right now is that i think it will be very clear yeah, I think Madman is correct. The Mark of the Beast is Dogecoin. 100%. Um, I think that you're right. Dogecoin is the mark for sure. For sure. Clay uh, Farnett brings up a good point that I, I think, uh, you know, we should definitely look into that a little bit more. Um, Radical asks if I eat pork. I do not eat pork. Okay, I do not eat it. I do not eat it because of that scripture right there. And Leviticus 11, right, by Ikra. Um, I know that most modern Christians eat pork. That's, that's between them and the Lord, okay? Who am I to judge? But, uh, you know, I just try and do what the Lord says to the best of my ability, just like we all do, right? Oh, John Nell asks a good question. Did Constantine decide what testaments should be in the Bible? It's a complicated question. When we, when we talk about the Bible, you know, most people recognize the Bible to be 66 books. And, um, you know, those 66 books, different different denominations have different books in their Bible. They all pretty much have the same books, but some have more. Okay, like the Ethiopian Orthodox Church has a lot more books. The Catholic Church and the Protestant Church have different amounts of books. Um, you know, this gets into an area where I feel like there there is some gray space. You know, what books you want to consider Scripture, what books you don't want to consider Scripture. I don't want to get too much into that because it's a complicated issue, but I will say this. It's very important to understand that none of the books themselves have been changed in any way. Okay, The, the number of books in the Bible might vary from uh, tradition to tradition, but the content within each one of those books has remained the same. So when people say that the Bible has been changed over time, you know, there's no way to substantiate that claim. Uh, because we can go back in time and, and look at the ancient manuscripts from thousands of years ago, and they read word for word what our modern Bibles say today. Um, but, you know, if some, you know, traditions will put the Apocrypha in their Bibles, and others will put, you know, Enoch and other Pseudopigrapha in their Bibles, you know, uh, the early church, uh, you know, the early believers in Yeshua the Messiah, 
they used the Septuagint, which had the Apocrypha in there. You know, we see Paul alluding to the Apocrypha uh, in his writings. We see Peter alluding to, you know, things that are only found in the book of Enoch. So clearly there were other books that people read and people accepted as at least to contain true things in those books. Um, so the, the Constantine and, and, and the, the Catholic Church, they did hold councils to decide what books should be in the Bible. Um, but all those books, you have to understand, that they agreed upon were already accepted by, by believers throughout all areas. And they were just making it a, a standard to avoid confusion. Let's just put it that way. I hope that makes sense, uh, Johann Nell. Um. How many months from now will Bitcoin recover? You know, I don't know. We could consolidate for quite some time. We really could. We really could. Yes, uh, Stephen Davidson, you're correct. You're correct. Uh, and I know, you know, a lot of people, especially partial preterists, will say that, um, yeah, that the market was already here with Nero. Uh, because of that, because of the variant, the textual variant within the manuscript, you know, I, it's inter it's a very interesting, um, a very interesting field of study for sure, Stephen Davidson. But you are correct. Yeah, I don't know uh, LXF. I I don't think that's true, to be honest with you. Um, I I would I would stay away from. Uh, from that kind of a uh, that kind of um, assertion, only because remember the mark of the beast has to be something that is us open openly proclaiming the the allegiance and the worship to uh, another another figure. And uh, although I I do have some issues with uh, this thing here. Uh, I, I do have some, some, some serious issues with that. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it is, uh, it is this, okay? I wouldn't do that. JL1 asks if pork was forbidden because they didn't understand trigonosis at the time. You know, I don't know. And here's the thing. You know, God doesn't tell us why. He doesn't tell us why. And uh, I don't think it's our place to ask why uh, pork is forbidden. Just like uh, it's not the kid's job to ask the parent why they're forbidden to touch the hot stove. The parent knows what's best. You know, if God created me and he created my body, uh, then he knows what I should put in that body, right? So I trust him. I trust him that he created the human body and he knows what's good for food and what's not. And, you know, at the end of the day, when we read that passage... You know, it, it has nothing to do with health or anything like that. It, uh, it has to do with holiness, right? It has to do with being set apart for God. It, it doesn't have to do with health. It, um, he finishes this whole thing, you know, by saying, um, look, don't, don't render yourself detestable through any of these unclean beasts. You are to be holy, for I am holy, and you shall not make yourselves unclean with any of these things, for I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God, you shall be holy, for I am holy. You know, I mean, basically, this is part of the identity that we take on. If God is our God, right? I am the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt, right? You used to be a slave in Egypt. Now I took you out of that slavery uh, to make you my people. You shall be set apart, for I am set apart. And and we see this, this, um, this, Sentiment, right? This call to holiness echoed even in the in the New Testament scriptures, right? I mean, it's very interesting. First Peter one. Oops, First Peter one sixteen. I'm pretty sure. I wonder why this um, isn't working. You know, Peter says, you know, he's calling us to holiness, right? He says, don't be conformed to your former lusts which were in your ignorance, but be like the Holy One who called you, right? 
Be holy in all your behavior because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. He's quoting the dietary law section of the scripture um, to exhort us to be holy because of our calling in the Lord Yeshua. And, uh, you know, God doesn't give us a reason as to why we should not eat certain things, but he says not to do it. And the reason is because, you know, we used to be in bondage to things that were not God's, right? Living in bondage to the elemental spirits of the world. Um, but we've been transferred, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We were slaves to sin. And through the blood of the Passover lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, we have been set free from our slavery to not the Egyptians only, but to sin, right? E Egypt is a, is a type in Scripture, right? It's a type of being in bondage to the devil. And that's what we were. And so when it comes to, you know, me and eating pork, it really has nothing to do with why. I, is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? I don't know. I don't really care. It's just the Lord made it clear this is, this is about being set apart for me. So that's why I, I choose to do that. Hope that makes sense. Shout out to Yeti Gaming. Talking about some of, some of the uh, these things in here. You know, guys, I don't like to talk about uh, these things on here, okay? When people talk about those things on YouTube, for some reason, their YouTube channel goes away. Um... Aaron wants to know, how do I get the VPVR indicator? You just need to have any old version of uh, any old version of TradingView. Uh, I think it might have to be at least one paid. And you're going to go over to indicators. You're going to click indicators. You're going to click um, visible range. And it's this one right here. And, um, yeah. Yeah, NOHR says Acts 10 allows us to eat bacon. Yeah, I would disagree with that interpretation. You know, we could get into that if you want, but I, I don't think it I don't think that Acts 10 actually says that. Uh stimulus money, lobster is a bottom feeder, but God has no problem with it. Um Um, I, I don't know, are you talking about the, the scripture or are you talking about Islam? Because I know Islam, you're permitted to eat lobster, but in, 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 the, uh, in the Torah you are not permitted to eat lobster. Um, GMAX wants to know, don't I agree that the real indicator is coming back into the green? Um, the money flow for Bitcoin on the daily time frame, looks like you know we could be curving back into the green here. It does look like that, but it, but if we go to the twelve-hour time frame, you know we could see it starting to curve back, and we can see momentum starting to pick up. You know, personally, here's what I here's what I if my I know you shouldn't trade off your gut, right? But I don't think we're going to come much lower than twenty-six k. I think we might see another drop to twenty-six k, and um, you know if the if we keep printing higher trigger waves like this on the 12 hour and if money flow continues to curve up like this then um, then yeah I, I would um, I would say that it looks like the money's coming back into the Bitcoin I mean uh, people are definitely buying at these levels for sure Matthew 1115 says Matthew Yao let's check it out let's check out Matthew 1115 what could go wrong guys what could go wrong he who has ears let him hear Nice. That's that's a good a good exhortation. A good exhortation, in the red letters too. You know, in the red letters. Don't want to discredit the reds. Doge to the moon says we're coming down to nineteen thousand eight hundred ninety nine. Thomas Ball says I believe eating pork was overwritten by the new law and the blood of Christ. Yeah, I would disagree, my my brother. I would disagree, but I know most uh, most uh, Christians believe this uh, these days. That, you know, 
I, I would disagree. I would disagree. Because if, if this is true, um, then there's no way to delineate in between eating pork and, let's say, murder, right? How, I mean, if God has a perfect standard, and that standard can change, then that means objective truth can change, right? Because if, if the Word of God is forever, and it's objective truth, but that objective truth can change, I think that's a problem. And if Jesus is God, and if Jesus is the one who gave the commandments from Mount Sinai to not eat pork, and then God himself says, ah, just kidding about that one, guys, then uh, that's a problem, right? Because if Jesus is the Word made flesh, and the written Word is revealing the heart of God to us in writing, just as the, the living Word reveals the heart of God to us in the flesh, then if we have inconsistencies um, between what God says is, is sinful and what is not sinful, then to me that's an issue. But I understand your point of view, Thomas Ball, and you know, definitely no disrespect, my brother. But I, I do encourage you to look into that a little bit more. I want to read that Wyckoff comment, Wyckoff comment. What, what does it... What, um, what's the Wyckoff? Somebody said something about Wyckoff. Somebody asks... Um, oh, man. <clears throat> oh, man, no, I didn't see the C-137 stream from last night, but I want to check it out. I do want to check it out. I need to check that out. Um, memory Man, shout out to Memory Man. Yeah, I would disagree with you, Memory Man. I would disagree. The reason I would disagree is because, you know, if, if we read the, the, the scriptures without, you know, any lens of the Catholic Church, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that, that Jesus is God, right? He's God revealed to us in the flesh, right? So, you know, when we read the um, the Old Testament even, right? Go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. We can pull up the Hebrew, too. You know, when it talks about the Messiah, you know, behold, the days are coming, declares Adonai, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. You know, it's um, a tzadik. I mean, this, is, this has always been understood to be talking about the Messiah. You know, it says, uh, and this is the name which he will be called, you know, Adonai Tzidkenu. It, you know, the name of the Messiah, according to the the Old Testament scriptures, is the, the divine name of the only true God, right? Yahweh, some people say, yod heh vav -Hey. Um, This is the name of the Messiah. And, you know, when we go to the, the New Testament scriptures... Well, no, we could stay in the Old Testament too, right? This is all before Yeshua, before Jesus was born in the flesh. You know, we go to um, Isaiah chapter 9, you know, verse 6, talking about the Messiah. You know, Ki yeled yulad lanu, for unto us a, a um, child is born. Bein nitan lanu, a son is given to us. Vatahim ra al shikmo, the government will be upon his shoulders. Vaik rashimo. Uh, his name will be called Peleoetz El Gibor Avi Ad Tsar Shalom. I mean, it, it says that the name of the Messiah is um, El Gibor, right? And the mighty God. Um, and over and over again, you know, we, we can see that uh, the Messiah is himself God. He has to be God, right? When he's ruling on the earth in Isaiah chapter 2. You know, it's uh, when he's ruling on the earth, the Messiah, right? It's, it's calling him the Lord. Then when we get to the New Testament scriptures, you know, Paul himself is quoting a passage from Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45, um, where God says, you know, it's, it's actually a very powerful passage where uh, God is speaking here. He says, every knee will bow to me, every tongue will swear to me. Right? 
uh, the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back that to me every knee will bow and to me every tongue will swear. Then we get to the New Testament scriptures, right? And Paul actually quotes this exact passage where God is speaking. And Paul says, you know, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will swear allegiance. That Jesus, the Messiah, is yod is the Lord. I mean, Paul makes it extremely clear that Jesus is God. And um, that's in the book of Philippians chapter 3, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if I'm right. Um, yeah, maybe I'm wrong about Ephesians chapter three, uh, Philippians three. Maybe it's Philippians two. Mm, yeah, I guess I need to study up on my scripture, but I could find it by searching. Isn't that cool? You can search and just find up Philippians 2. So at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. There he goes quoting from Isaiah, right? This is God speaking. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and those under the earth. We can zoom in a little bit on this passage right here, right? That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. I mean, you know, if, uh, if the Catholic Church twisted the scripture to make Jesus God, um, I mean, it, when we're just reading the plain scripture, it makes it pretty clear that Jesus is God. And that to Jesus every knee will bow, and to Jesus every tongue will swear allegiance. That he is Lord. And, um, you know, when Paul is quoting from the Old Testament to make this connection, I mean, this is a very powerful statement. And, I mean, you know, the book of John, right? book of John, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I mean, this is very clear, you know, Jesus is God. It's a, it's, a, it's a mystery. But it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that God himself would take on flesh. I mean, that he would condescend down to our level, and get dirty. For the sake of relationship, for the sake of relationship, for restoring humanity back to where we were in the garden, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, after Adam and Eve sinned, right, there's a passage here that I really like where it says um, that they heard the sound, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. In Hebrew, it says, Vaishmu et kol Adonai Elohim, mitalech bagan leruach hayom. This verb right here, mitalech, that's translated walking in the garden, it's a, um, it's a heat palel verb, right, which means it's uh, reflexive which means it involves relationship. You can't, uh, it involves um, intimacy, right? Mitalech, they're walking together. It's, um, it's conveying the meaning that, th that humanity and the Lord God would walk together in the garden, okay? This idea of relationship, this idea of family, right? This idea of family. This is our God, right? He's our Father. It's about family. And um, and look at what God says, right? They heard his voice. They hid in the trees of the garden. And uh, the Lord God called unto the man. And he said, Ayecha. He said, where are you? Where are you? Where are you, my son? What have you, what, what, where are you? This intimacy and relationship is, is what God is restoring us to through the Messiah, Yeshua. And, you know, that's why he took on flesh and became a man. Um, so that he could restore us to that family that we had back in the garden. And, um, you know, there, this, this is a very beautiful thing. It's a very mysterious, beautiful thing. And um, God is so big and so powerful that he could do this. That he could do this. Um, G Max Billy, please read my comment. What I said is a question, not an observation. Can you type it again, G Max Billy? Um, type it again, G Max Billy. 
Yeah, this is this is pretty interesting, right, Clay? I have 400 people in here, and we're just discussing religion in the Bible. It's interesting. Oh, Summer, uh, of course, of course I believe that no man is justified by the works of the law. I do not. Why would I believe that? That's very uh, anti-scripture, right? No one has ever been justified by the works of the law. Uh, nobody. Um, absolutely nobody in the scripture. Otherwise, none, no, no, who, who could possibly be uh, justified, right? David was justified. Uh not by the works of the law, but by grace through faith. That's how God has always justified people, right? Jonah got mad at God. He's like, God, I didn't want to go to Nineveh because I knew you were so gracious, so forgiving. I knew you would forgive these people. Um, yeah, uh, let me not confuse anybody. When I say that I don't eat pork because God said to, uh, I'm not trying to just become justified Okay. We have to put. We can't. Okay. How do I say this? Let's 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 go to let's go to Exodus chapter twenty, right? The ten words. These are the ten commandments. Everyone's familiar with these, right? The ten commandments are irrelevant. They're completely irrelevant to any human unless you understand the first thing God says, right? He says, Anochi Adonai Elohecha Asher Hoseticha mi Eretz Mitzray mi Beit Avadim. He says, I am Adonai your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Okay. All the other stuff that God's about to say is completely irrelevant unless you already have been brought out of Egypt, right? If you have not been brought out of slavery to sin by the shed blood of Messiah by grace through faith then there's no reason for you to keep any of the commandments of God right the reason people keep God's commandments is not to try and earn anything with God it's because of what God has done for them right a changed heart toward the Lord right uh, I know in my own life when I came to a true saving faith with the Lord um, the things I used to love, I started to hate. And the things I used to hate, I started to love. Why? Because God will change a person. God will change a person. And so keeping the commandments of God is not the root of a person's salvation, but it is the fruit of a person's salvation, right? I think that's very important. Um, so people get confused if I say, I don't eat pork, you know, because God said so. That's the only reason I, I, I don't eat pork is, is literally because God said so. And he saved me from my sin. And so therefore, the, the fruit of that relationship is that I'm, I'm going to want to do what he says. I'm going to want to do what he says. Not because I'm trying to earn anything, but because I, I want to serve him, right? I want to I do what he said to do. And not do the things that he said not to do. Like It's like any relationship, right? If I know my wife hates... When I leave my dirty socks on top of her pillow, I'm not going to leave my dirty socks on top of her pillow, right? And if God says, uh, don't eat pork, well, I won't eat pork, right? It's not because I'm trying to earn anything, but there is an exhortation to holiness, right? I mean, uh, and pork is a small issue. There's much bigger issues <laughs> than eating pork. But even still, it's in the scripture, right? It's in the scripture. So let I don't want to confuse anybody. I believe that man is justified only by by grace through faith alone, right? And not by the works of the law. I don't believe anybody has ever been justified through the works of the law. Now, that's an impossible burden that nobody can bear, okay? Only Jesus was able to keep that perfectly. And that's why he was the, the perfect sacrifice. Jose, shout out to Jose. Um... Shout out to Jose. Uh, Buckwheat says, God said bye. <laughs> You're funny, man. You're funny. Um, Rick Rock 22. Yeah, you know, go back and rewatch the stream because, you know, we, we wax a little scriptural at the end here. But, um, yeah.
John 17, 1, the, the great high priestly prayer. It's a great passage, Roberto Huera. Memory man, Jehovah is an archon. Uh, you think that um, that um, the God of the Bible is an archon, memory man? I'm, I'm curious, is, is that, or am I, am I breaking into a context here? Because the scripture does talk about these archons, you know. That's, that is a Greek word that means ruler. Uh, there are some passages we could go into that actually use this word, if you're interested. Um, yeah, let's read John 17, 1. Yeah, that's that's a good passage, you know. That's a good passage. Let's see what Bitcoin's doing here. Bitcoin's losing our support here at 35. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's see yeah, losing support. Yes, looks like we're losing support, guys. Yeah, we're losing support. You know, this is this is looking like, uh, to be honest with you guys, I, I would definitely probably look for a short here if I wasn't already in a short. I would definitely look for a short here. Uh, the reason is because, look, we're about to print the red dot on the one hour, which will give us a uh, nice um, downward direction on market cipher. Not saying to enter the trade, guys. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's looking it's looking like we're coming down a little bit here. Uh, eh. Now that I'm on the one minute, I'm not too sure. <laughs> That's why I really, you know, I'm a big fan. Like, I, I, if we see a retest, I don't like to just, I'm not a breakout, breakdown trader, you know. Carl from the moon, I love the guy. You guys know. You guys know how much I love Carl from the moon. Right, I got a picture of him right here, right? Me and Carl. Carl, I love you, bro. Let's collaborate, man. Come on. But I'm not a breakout trader. I like to short resistance and long supports. Short resistance, long supports. All right, John 17. Jesus spoke these things, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father... The hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Yeah, what a beautiful prayer that uh, the Lord makes on our behalf, you know. Yeah, memory man, you know, I, I would love to hang out with you too, man. <laughs> you seem like, a, from what I see from your, your YouTube chats, man, I feel like we feel like we got... We could have some. We should. Have, we could have some good com combos, man. We could have some good combos for sure, for sure. <laughs> James, James, shout out to James uh, Garleep. Nice one, bro. Nice one, bro. Appreciate the uh, the comment there. Shout out to Daniel, who's 52% up on a 100x short. Uh, man, Q, I'm sorry about that. But you know what? Historically, people who buy Bitcoin at the highs and HODL end up, end up in profit. Um, shout out to Elon Musk in the chat. Uh, Elon Musk, cool guy, right? What part of the Bible talks about the rise of the global market and the anti-Messiah? Oh, yeah. Revelation chapter 13. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, here's the thing about biblical prophecy is uh, there's a lot of books. That if, if you're going to read the book of Revelation, you have to know your Old Testament, right? You have to know the Tanakh. Because every symbol in the book of Revelation is pointing to something from the Hebrew Scriptures, Okay. And so you can't, you have to be well versed in the Bible if you're going to read the book of Revelation. But, or you could start with Revelation and you'll have so many questions, then you'll have to go back to Genesis and read through the whole rest of the Bible. It's a good place to start. Um, You know, this, this is one of the passages that, that speaks about it. The, the most famous one, right? I saw another beast 
coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Right, so basically, he looks like a lamb, but the words that he says are, are coming from the devil. Okay, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast. Okay, you got to read back a little bit to hear about the first beast. Um, who basically is a, is a man who gets his power from Satan. And he had a mortal wound and was somehow resurrected from it. And the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. And they worshipped Satan. Um, because Satan gave his power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to wage war against him? And uh, the beast was given a mouth to speak arrogant words and blasphemies. And the beast was given authority to act on the earth for 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. And um, then there's another beast who comes up here. And uh, this beast is... Um, he has all the same power as the first beast. And he makes the, the earth and all those who dwell on the earth worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. And the second beast performs great miracles that he even makes fire come down from heaven to earth in the presence of people. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the miracles which he performs in the presence of the first beast. And he tells all those on earth to make an image to the beast who had the, mor the, mortal, the fatal wound of the sword and had come to life. It's very interesting. Um, and this, this beast, he causes all, the small, the great, the rich, the poor, the free and the slaves, to be given a mark on the right hand or forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. So right here, you know, we see a, a future time where there is a one-world religious system Right, because we see uh, a one-world political system. Right, the whole world is w wondering after this this beast, following him, um, saying, "Hey, who can who can make war against this guy?" Right, he he has all the answers, you know. Um, and then they actually worship him. Right, uh, they all who dwell on the earth worship him. And um, then there's a there's a there's a one-world monetary system as well. Because it was it was given to the beast to have power over you know the whole world essentially it says somewhere in here somewhere in here the beast has authority over let me see if I can find it right oh right here. Uh, it was it was given to the beast um, to have authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. So this guy has power over the whole earth. There's a one world political system. There's a one world religion. Believe it or not, there's going to be a one world religion. We can kind of see that starting to happen now a little bit. And uh, then there, there's a one world financial system where if you don't take this mark, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. It's very interesting. So this, uh, Revelation 13 is, is the main chapter that, that discusses these things. But uh, if you want more clarity on you know these beasts and the heads and the horns, uh, go back and read Daniel. Okay, Daniel chapter 7 specifically, um, where Daniel has the vision about the beasts. Uh, actually, the whole book of Daniel, really, will bring a lot of clarity to this chapter of Revelation. But uh, this, this is where you're going to find that. Madman says, does reading that not make you think of Jesus at all? Oh yeah, of course it makes me think of Jesus. That's why that's why he's called the uh, the um, the instead of Jesus, right? The Antichrist. I mean, really, that word Antichrist doesn't mean that he's against Christ. It means that he's in place of Christ. He's a counterfeit, a counterfeit for sure. That's why I, I believe that. Um, you know, whoever this guy is, is probably going to have some kind of resurrection happen to him. You know?
Yes, uh, Yuga, that, that, that code does not work, bro. The 7% off doesn't work anymore. I'm sorry. It, it, um, it, try, use this code. Uh, use this code. I, I love y'all. This will give you 17% off. 17% off. Imaginary Dreams, the, the course is on uh, TA. It's not on the Bible. Okay, not on the Bible. Um, the course is on TA. William Holton, where did I learn Hebrew? Oh, yes. Uh, Kilt Logram. Yeah, we're not going back to TA. Uh, we're doing the Bible, and then I'm going <laughs> to go to sleep. But um, where did I learn Hebrew? Internet, you know? Uh, a whole bunch of places, right? Uh, a whole bunch of places that I've had friends at, at my synagogue who, who have taught me throughout the years, and currently to this day... I go to a new synagogue now. Um, and, of course, I've taken classes on the Internet. Um, studied studied a lot of scripture. Imaginary Dream says, what is this? The religion of science. Science has become a religion in a lot of ways. Uh, well, I should say... Uh, yeah, Memory Man, I totally agree with you uh, about the Archons being the demonic rulers of this realm. Uh, absolutely. Because, um... Uh, SR says he's waiting on the free course. Yeah, if we can... It, like, every stream that gets up to a thousand likes, guys, I do give away the course... Okay, but it has to happen during the stream. It has to happen during the stream. Uh, I could never make a Bible course, my brother, because uh, I'm not qualified for that. Uh, Ethan, yeah, um, you know, I I am not, um, I am not, I do not subscribe to the partial preterist or full preterist view. Although I see the, um, the the parallels there, I hold to more of a, a cyclical view uh, that's leading up to the the final fulfillment of these things, right? Because um, you know it. There's a lot of prophecy, okay? That that if you're going to take the preterist viewpoint, that you have to just completely either ignore or allegorize into oblivion. Um, you know, if we go back, Ethan, to the book of Deuteronomy, okay, There's there are promises to God's people, Israel, that will, ha that, that will come about after all the blessings and all the curses that are written in the book come about. So, you know, 70 AD is, is definitely not the end, my friend. But it is a type, okay? Just like how Antiochus Epiphanes, right, was a type of Nero. Just like Nero is a type of a future leader that will come. I mean, these things happen in cycles. You could have had preterists back in Yeshua's day and Jesus' day who said, Now nah, the abomination of desolation already happened with Antiochus Epiphanes during Hanukkah but you know Jesus says in Matthew 24 Mark 13 you know when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel parenthesis reader take note and parenthesis you know Jesus is pointing that to a still future event uh, even though that event was already understood at the time to be a past event so I think I think there's room for things to happen in cycles uh, just biblically and and even just the, the, the Hebraic mindset of time is that things happen in cycles. Things happen in cycles. There's a pattern. Prophecy is pattern. It's not just prophecy fulfillment A and B. It's a pattern, right? We see the pattern. Abraham, right? He goes down to Egypt. He end up, uh, ends up getting in trouble with uh, Abimelech, and, uh, and then he gets sent out of Egypt with a whole bunch of stuff. And then we see the same thing happen to his son Isaac. He goes down to Egypt. Um, 
we see the same thing with Jacob. He goes out to Egypt, they become slaves, eventually they leave with a whole bunch of stuff. And this pattern of God's people going down into some place, getting into bondage, getting set free by God, and leaving with a whole bunch of stuff. This is a, a, a pattern that we see in prophecy all throughout the scripture until, you know, this is true with a lot of different prophecies, and I hope that makes sense. I might just be sounding like an idiot right now. Madman said... <laughs> Tickle Bear asks Calvinist or Armenian. Yeah, it depends on what scripture I'm reading, right? Give me some Romans 9 and some John 6 and I I might uh, might fall a little Calvinist, but give me some Ezekiel 18 and some uh, you know some Hebrews 6 maybe I'll be a little Armenian. I I I I don't I I I am not uh, not smart enough to come to one side or the other, my friend. And I, I think I think that there's some tension there on purpose that uh, these things are impossible for us to understand. If they were clear, we wouldn't be arguing about it for for millennia, right? Yeah. Shout out to imaginary dreams. Yeah. I guess the, rewatch the stream if you want real TA. Uh, what do you mean by short? Um, you know, basically, shorting is where you are well, on margin trading. You're basically you're you're selling cryptocurrency uh, on margin, right? You're, you're, it's being loaned to you from the exchange. Essentially, that's that's a good way to look at it. And um, here we come up for a retest of this resistance here. This is interesting to see what's going to happen here. Are we going to lose this? Are we going to lose this? And um, so you can profit on the way down by shorting, but it's only possible to do on, on margin trading because you can sell Bitcoin that you don't have and then buy it back at a lower level for the profit. Essentially, that's 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 the way to look at it. Yeah, it does look like a good level. A ROM to, to short, absolutely. Uh, so, SR, come back to my streams, you know, in the future, and absolutely, um, we will make that happen when we get to a thousand likes. Shout out to John's channel. Uh, oh, awesome. I'm glad you got the course. I, I hope you get a lot out of it. I'm sure you will. Oh, I could activate the Spanish uh, the Spanish subtitles. That's cool. Oh, Tickle Bear. Okay, so you're in the same boat as me with the Calvin Armenium. I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where, like, people can get so wrapped around the axle about that. And it's like, man... That's 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 what I call it, first world Christianity issue, right? I mean, if we were in uh, if we were in a different part of the world right now, uh, people would not be having that discussion. If, uh, if, if 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 believers were being persecuted, like they are in many many parts of the world, you know, you think they'd be arguing about predestination? Of course not. What's up, Monte Crypto? Monte Crypto, if you just got here, man, go back and rewatch the stream, bro, because right now we're like talking about the Bible. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm actually about to head out, too. Um, yeah, right, Tickle Bear? Christians in China could care less about Calvinism. Yeah, it's Mary Yang, it's a Western Christianity debate, you know. 
uh, Tom Roma, did I were, were I raised in the religion that I currently practice? Uh, you could say yes, and you could say no. It depends on how you look at it. <laughs> um, when did I take the biggest leap in my spiritual journey? In 2012. In 2012. That's where I decided, uh, well, that's when the Lord really, uh, really, really spoke to me. That's when I would say I was uh, born again, absolutely, in 2012. I'll never forget that. Shout out to my pen rye crub com. Thanks for being here, bro. Ethan... Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you, Ethan. You know, in fact, I don't even like to call it Calvinism. I like to call it the doctrines of grace. I feel like that's that's better because I don't like to put the name of a person on it. But I cannot, um, I cannot fully subscribe to, to, I cannot fully subscribe to Tulip, and I know not all Calvinists do. Um, but to me, it's a big mystery. It's a big mystery. I don't know how much sovereignty God allots to his people. Throughout the entire scripture, there is an exhortation for people to choose. And I just don't know. I just don't know. And I think if you're going to try and uh, make a case for one side or the other, then you need to either ignore or twist scriptures that are clearly teaching the opposite view. And that's just the way I see it. Like, you know, to try and hear an Armenian try and talk about Romans 9, right? Where Paul's clearly saying that, you know, God rose up Pharaoh and 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 uh, certain wicked people for a certain purpose. I mean, that's pretty clear, right? But then there's other passages like Ezekiel 18, right? If if a uh, if a righteous man starts to be wicked and he forsakes his righteousness, then he'll die in his sins. And if he repents, then he'll live. But if he goes back to sinning, he'll die in his sins. Like. I don't, I just don't, I don't know. You got the Hebrews 6 issue, right? The Hebrews 6 issue. And Paul basically saying, hey, I'm, I'm writing this letter to you guys in case you believed in vain. Or, you know, or, or you know, it's, it's, we're saved as long as we still remain in the truth that we first heard. It's like, well, what does that even mean, Paul? It's like, my, my, you know, doesn't really matter to me at the end of the day because if one or the other was true, it's not really going to change my walk. It's not going to change my walk. Uh, yeah, Marty's Garage. You know what? This has turned into a, a, a biblical talk, right? Yeah. Uh, Tickle Bear, I've never heard of that, man. I've never heard of YWAM. Never heard of it. Well, okay, what is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. Unmerited favors. Giving you something that you do not deserve. Giving you something that you do not deserve. And, um... At least that's the way I... I look at it. In, in Hebrew, chen, right? Chen... Like the name John, Yohanan, um, or, you know, Hannah. They all come from that same word, grace. Madman says, have I ever wondered why a large majority of people continue to believe or never question the religion they are raised with and they assume they are the right one? Everyone is like this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think I think that all beliefs should be held to scrutiny. Um, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of scrutinizing uh, my own beliefs and researching and and reading and searching and, you know, the beliefs I hold to, um, should I say, although it is by faith, um, it's not necessarily a blind faith. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, Ethan, you know, I, I, I hear you, bro. Trust me.
I, I totally hear you on that, man. You know, <laughs> I'm not against you, bro. I'm just saying I'm I'm somewhere in the middle. You know, I'm somewhere in the middle. This is an interesting comment. I wish I could. I wish I could actually say my true thoughts on this uh, power meshwar G. I wish I could say what I was really thinking about this. I wonder if Memory Man has any thoughts about this. Um, Q says so. Only sinners get into heaven by Jesus. The other perfect people work at it. I would say that there are no perfect people, my friend. I would say that there are none. And, um, you know, I just would uh, would point you to a, a certain scripture. Uh, uh, you know, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. These things I have written to you. Well, okay, he goes on. But, uh, you know, this this is what this is what Scripture says. And so, you know, take that and do with it as ye may. You know? Don't have to, you don't have to believe that. That's just, this is what it says. Yeah, shout out to Memory Man. Shout out to Ovenchi. Uh, this YouTube channel uh, apparently uh, shows the comparisons and point of view between science and Islam. Memory Man, shout out to Memory Man. <laughs> Um, TD says, is this a religious class or a crypto page? Fucking shut up, man. Well, TD, you know what? This is actually a, a crypto uh, channel, but sometimes we wax biblical, uh, especially at these late night streams where I'm tired and I just start to talk about the stuff that's in my mind. And a lot of times scriptural stuff is on my mind, you know. But um, guys, you know, I do... Um, usually not talk about these kinds of things on the channel um, but let's see uh, film him I hope you don't also spout religion and talk down on people like crypto face uh, I try not to I try not to talk down to anybody I, I honestly I respect everybody as a human being made in God's image I enjoy uh, different perspectives and different viewpoints and um, and I respect everybody's viewpoint and everybody's position, uh, but I hold to my own, and I think uh, everybody should should do that. Hold to their own views on things, and I think discussion is good. Uh, and I think our our culture is is uh, we cannot have discussion anymore, right? People just get so dang offended about everything that doesn't line up with everything that they think is true. And how are we going to make any kind of progress how are we ever going to be progressive if we uh, we can't have open discussion about things right G spirit is waiting for a long from 22 to 35k a long long uh, you know what that's a great position G spirit uh, absolutely 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 uh, Q. Uh, you know what? That's a great point, and I would agree. <laughs> I would agree with you on that, man. I tend to agree with that, uh, but like I said, I, I, there are certain passages that just, you know, that make me make me wonder, man. I'm just gonna be honest. Uh, Robert, I never figured out how to say your last name, bro, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try. Can you phonetically spell it out to me, you know? Um, 
Can you phonetically? Uh, Nirnanjan Niru asks, "What about buying Bitcoin right now?" You know, I, I would be, I would be. I I did buy some Bitcoin. Okay, I bought some Bitcoin at these low levels. Marty leads thirty three. Uh, I think I've heard of him, man. I think I know who that is. Piece of string theory. I'm going to write that down. Uh, Harry C. Uh, Heresy says, Religion separates people. Separation leads to war. War leads to to destruction of everything good. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with that heresy. Um, but I think that religion is something that man will create regardless of reality. Um, you know, for example, I, I would say that... Uh, I would say communism is a religion. I would say scientism is a religion. Um, I would say humanism is a religion. Uh, any kind of philosophical ideology that tries to um, tries to define a, a purpose for humanity is a religion and th that will always separate people and because man is is evil in his heart in his unredeemed state there will always be separation and and war and destruction of everything good absolutely do i think this is the end of the bull run it very well could be but I really think that um, we could have a, a possibility to continue upward. Family Room Films wants to know about my true name. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should talk about my real name. I like the name Jason Casper. It's a pretty cool name, right? Good old Jason Casper. My quick thoughts on Bible references to cashless money. Yeah, I don't know if it necessarily says cashless money, but the fact that, you know, the fact that the fact that there's this mark that you can get on your hand, right? Uh, that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one that has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. You know, this implies that there is some kind of financial system in place uh, that is not cash like what we have today. It's also very interesting that this image of the beast has life. And this image of the beast is able to speak. And the image of the beast is able to cause as many who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. You know, it's, it seems like some kind of AI technology or some kind of, like, Internet of Things grid thing. Like, how is there this image, this inanimate image, right? I mean, that word in the Greek, uh, you know, the image. You know, if we look up um, if we look up this word, you know, in the Greek, uh, it, it, it's the same word that's used primarily to discuss idols, right? Like, false gods. In, uh, in the scripture, right? Asherah and Baal and all these other deities that the other nations worshipped. So there's this idol, like think of like a statue of some kind of god that comes to life and is able to speak. And this idol, this inanimate object, is able to speak and cause people to be put to death if they don't have a certain mark on them. Definitely this blockchain technology is leading us down a path that could uh, put us in a situation very similar to what is discussed here in the book of Revelation, for sure. And uh, it's very intriguing to me as well. Tom Roma. Shout out to Tom Roma. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I appreciate you, bro. Because, yeah, like, you know, it's good for people. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, too. Like, agree or disagree with somebody. I enjoy hearing people's perspectives as well. I really do. 
especially those that are different than mine, because I like to think about them and say, huh, that's an interesting perspective. Let me think about that a little bit more, even if I disagree. Oh, okay, so MM, uh, MMAC, AM videos, I'm sorry if I'm not reading that right, has, um, has heard speculation about AI. Yeah, I mean, it seems speculative. Uh, Justin McKinney talks about the Book of Enoch. Yeah, it's interesting stuff in there for sure. Um, Marty's Garage loves Bitcoin but hate it for the exact concept, the mark of the beast. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. You know, this um, this technology is uh, is definitely leading us in that direction. But in the meantime, there's no reason why we can't uh, take advantage of it, especially if we're you know, right now, Bitcoin in and of itself is is, is not uh, some kind of mark that we're taking in order to worship uh, an inanimate object that was brought to life. Uh, so, you know. Uh, G Spirit says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, and uh, guys, it, I've been on here for way too long. So on this note, I am going to end the stream. So may God bless everybody. Peace.